Hello everyone, we have a 2010 Chevy Equinox with a complaint that the vehicle doesn't start. So one of the first steps as a technician is to verify the complaint. So let's see what the car is doing. So I have the ignition key on, key on engine off, I'm gonna crank and nothing happens. So look what happens into the dash. The ignition released and I go to crank position, nothing. So the engine's not cranking at all. So let's find out how the system, the starting system works. Okay, so after verifying the complaint, we have a no start with a no crank condition. So the first thing you should do is see how the starting system works. So I always recommend everyone to grab an electrical wiring diagram, spend a couple of minutes on see how the system works. And after you understand it and know exactly what to look for, you can test the whole circuit at one, one particular position, which is the starter relay. You can test the circuit there. So here we have the fuse box. And according to the diagram, the starter relay is number relay 63. So here's number really 63. So I'm gonna remove this relay and we're gonna be able to test the circuit. We have here a relay tester circuit. We're gonna be able to install it and find out what is going on. This particular relay circuit will have the terminals 87, 87A, and 30. On the other side, you will see 85 and 86. So based on the wiring diagram, we should be able to know what should you have at those particular terminals. So we're going to be able to install it on the fuse box and we're going to check the entire circuit. Okay. So after you spend a couple of minutes on the wiring diagram and understand at which terminals from the circuit you should be ex ex expecting battery voltage either at all times, during cranking or grounds. So once you understand the diagram first, you should be able to know already what to test. So here we're going to use a power probe. This particular power probe will be able to measure how much voltage is present as long as you touch the terminal with this tip. So here, at this particular wiring diagram, you have battery voltage being supplied to terminal 30. So if I go and touch terminal 30, here, and if you look at the multimeter, it's giving us 12.3 volts. So that's battery voltage at all times and that voltage is low for a battery. So battery is low on charge. On the other side, you have your starter motor. The starter motor, you have a purple wire that goes all the way to the fuse box and then goes through a fuse to terminal 87. So you should see a ground here at all times when the engine is not being cranked and the switch is off from the relay. So if I go to terminal 87 and touch terminal 87, multimeter, uh, on the power probe this plays zero volts so we're getting ground from the starter motor relay and the other terminals you have a g108 that's a ground uh, identified as 108 and this ground goes all the way to the relay to the fuse box at terminal 86 so terminal 86 at the relay if i touch the terminal from the other side I should be able to get zero volts. So that means I'm getting a ground. And then this ground goes through the coil windings of the relay to terminal 85 all the way to the PCM. And there's an open circuit here. When you crank the engine, the PCM will close this circuit. The coil windings require battery voltage and ground. So if you already have a ground at all times, that means that the PCM will supply battery voltage at terminal 85. So if I go to terminal 85, right now I have zero volts. So when I crank the engine, I should see battery voltage at this terminal. So let's try and see what happens. Okay, so we're touching terminal 85 from the relay. Terminal 85 goes to the engine control module. So the engine control module, when we cycle the ignition to the start position, that module should be able to supply battery voltage. So let's try it and see what happens. Let's crank the engine. That is cranked right now. I have 11 volts, 11.1 .1 volts, and then it stops. 
So during cranking, let's check here, terminal 30 and 87. Go to crank. I hear the really click, but I don't see any voltage change at all. Okay, so during cranking, we noticed a couple of things. We noticed that at terminal 85, the PCM supplies battery voltage during cranking. So that tells us the PCM is actually looking at the ignition switch. So it's it's able to close this circuit and supply battery voltage. But I didn't see a switch here. So let's let's do a couple of tests. Here we are at terminal 30 is you have battery voltage at all times. And let's check here terminal 87 this goes to the starter motor. So this particular tube has the ability to supply battery voltage if I press the button up or supply battery ground to the circuit. So if the starter motor works properly, if I apply battery voltage, this engine should crank if the starter motor works. So I'm gonna supply battery voltage and see what happens. The engine cranks so that tells us that the starter motor and the wire from the starter motor up to the relay you don't have an open wire or an open fuse and you the starter motor is working because the engine cranks the relay itself has two circuits the control side that's your terminal 86 and 85 and your switch inside terminal 30 and 87 we can test the 85 and 86 and check resistance. We look at manufacturer specifications, measure resistance across the terminal and determine if the resistance is okay. But on the switching side, like you heard it clicking, it's clicking but it's not actually switching internally. So by swapping the relay with a known good relay and the system working, you can determine that this relay is no good. But you gotta have evidence in order for you to condemn a bad component. Okay, so here we have two, both of the relays. The non good relay and the bad relay. Let's check in here the good relay. Terminals 87 and 30 are your switch. 85 and 86 are your coil windings. So we're gonna check resistance across these windings. meter shows 84 ohms most relays they will measure resistance from 60 to 100 ohms but the average is around 80 to 85 ohms that you will find on most of the relays so this is a good relay let's switch it and put the relay that was on the vehicle when the relay came in first. That's your 85 and 86 and the meter displays 83.7 ohms. So resistance wise the circuit is okay from 86 to 85 but the switching part from 30 to 87 is not working properly as you will see here in the circuit 86 and 85 there's your resistance and 87 and 30 is your switch so that switch part is staying open every time 86 and 85 get energized 30 and 87 stay open so this we can determine that the relay it's no good. So you cannot just use resistance and determine if the relay is actually working. You have to make sure that 87 and 30 they close when you energize the relay and they open when you de-energize the relay.